Which fountain pen under $100 is the most well-rounded for daily use for writing and pseudo calligraphy? So interesting. I get asked a lot of time, like, what's the best pen for a certain price point and stuff like that? Sure, I'm happy to share that all day long, but I like your pseudo calligraphy part because I have some thoughts on that. Um, for me, pseudo, pseudo calligraphy, I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, for me, what I interpret that to be is I want my handwriting to look fancy, but not have to actually learn calligraphy. And for me, the stub nib is the perfect way to do that. You don't have to, I mean, if all you have to do is write in cursive, or you could write in block print too, honestly. And if you have a stub nib, which is basically a nib that is ground in such a way that your cross stroke is thin and your fat and your down stroke is fat, um, of course, the, the, the bigger the nib that you get, the more drastic that's going to be. But uh, that's the basic concept. So just writing normally, especially if you're writing in cursive with a stub nib, will immediately make your handwriting look better and it'll look kind of scripty and calligraphy-like without having to change anything about the way you do things. That's part of the reason I love stubs so much is you don't really have to learn a lot of new, but it looks really cool. So uh, the best all-around nib kind of for that is a stub nib in the like 1.1 millimeter range. A one millimeter, 1.1, most of them tend to be 1.1. Uh, you don't really notice a difference between those two, by the way, but anything in that range, uh, you're gonna be pretty good because it's thin enough where you can still write and fit it on kind of normal paper size, normal line width. If you get any bigger than that, you're gonna have to write a lot bigger and it's gonna be hard to kind of fit it for everyday writing. Then it's really, you're kind of getting into a little more intentional kind of calligraphy. Um, so pens that kind of fit in that range, of course, Lamy Safari or All Star can definitely fit in there. Um, not a lot of the pens come with a 1.1 nib on it, so you have to buy one and you can swap it. It's pretty easy. You can use tape or sometimes I can remove it my finger. This one is not coming off. And I'm just realizing I just I have a polished steel nib on my charcoal. I swap my nibs all the time, so that's not the nib that comes on the pen. It's a black nib. But if you get a if you get a stub nib, or I think Lamy might even call it an italic, um, technically same thing uh, for this for the purpose of this explanation. But um, it's uh, it normally comes with a black nib, but their their 1.1 only comes in polished steel. Um, that is definitely one route that you can go. You know, Safari is around 30 bucks, an extra nib will run you another 13 or so. So it's a bit of investment, but not crazy. Another route you can go is to go with a Jin Hao or maybe a Noodler's pen like the Ahab, and then you can replace the nib with a Goulet nib or some other brand if you want, but the Goulet nibs work pretty well on these. Um, you can just swap it out. It's a number six size nib, pretty easy to pull out. You can get a 1.1 Goulet and put it on here. A lot of people like to do that. I hear good feedback all day long about people that have swapped, um, especially 1.1s actually, into their gin house, and it works really well. And total investment there is about 25 bucks. Not too shabby, and that works pretty well for a lot of folks. Um, the nice thing about the Ahab, if you wanted to go that route, is you're getting a flex nib. So you can experiment for doing kind of this pseudo calligraphy. If you wanted a different type of experience, you could not write with a lot of pressure and get kind of a normal everyday writing with the Ahab. You could flex it out and get some calligraphy that way, writing with flex, which takes a little more practice than the stub, but that's okay. Or you could get a Goulet nib and fit it on your Ahab and then really have a lot of options. Total investment there is gonna be about 40 bucks. So it's really not too bad either. That's, gonna, that's about what the Safari is gonna cost you. So you got a bunch of options here. I wanted to give you some. I would definitely recommend you check out, I have a couple of videos, 101 videos on flex nibs and stub nibs separately. I talk about both in both videos, but you can learn a lot about both of those two types of pens uh, in the 101 videos that I have on those. So I highly recommend you check those out. Cool. 